loves welcome back to my channel so as promised in this video i am going to show you how i created my wig from start to finish first things first most importantly make sure you like subscribe comment and turn on post notifications so you'll know when your girls drop out another video now as you see me point into that number 24 first things first is you want to get you a canvas head i got mine from amazon and it is a size 24 it came with those needles and also thread it came with pin needles and sewing needles threads and two clips now i got the size 24 that is probably the most important thing that you do when you're making your wig is make sure you get the correct size for your head now size 24 is large because your girl's head is large so do not judge me okay but you can definitely there's a lots of different you can google how to measure your head properly to get the right size but i believe it starts from um, size 21 and i believe it goes up to size 25 the medium or normal size is like a 22.5 uh, or i think it was 22 to 23 something like that that's considered a normal head size but your girl she, she's different so that's definitely important so I am going to link down in the description box everything I use in this video from the mannequin canvas head to this dome cap that you see me put it on and as you can see I'm just making sure I'm trying to get it in the middle of the canvas head as good as possible this dome cap is not necessarily con uh, constructed the best so you kind of kind of just eye it and I'm just pulling it down all the way tight so that it forms around that big dome and I tell y'all I was like oh this wig is gonna be too big my head is not that big girl uh, it fit perfectly <laughs> okay so yeah I am gonna go ahead and admit that I have a big dome but basically yep, all you're doing is just making sure that you got that dome cap the mesh dome cap that's the one I like to use that's the one that a lot of people like to use but if that's not your thing any cap of your choice will do but we are gonna be working with this mesh dome cap and I got it as centered as possible now I'm taking my T pins and just kind of pinning this cap down in place and one thing I wanted to mention before we really get into this is that the way I made this wig I got all of my instructions from Slade by Jordan here on YouTube he's awesome I did every step that he did and my wig came out phenomenal any other time I tried to do a wig it was too small but following these steps it'll be perfect so let's go ahead and get into it i'm grabbing my frontal and i am placing it probably two inches above where that dome cap ends and i'm gonna go to gonna go ahead and pin it down do not worry if that if it looks crazy it's not gonna be too big just trust me on this make sure you place that the the beginning or the edge of the frontal about two one to two inches or one and a half to two inches above where your dome cap ends if that makes sense then you pin it down with the t-pin and once you got it pinned down you just pull it back as tightly as it can go because we do not want any wrinkles in our frontal you're going to pull it back as tightly as you can pull it and then go ahead and just grab a t-pin and pin it there and if it's feeling crazy just trust me don't stop just go ahead and do that and as you can see here I just have it pinned down now I'm going in and taking the edges of that frontal and what I'm going to do is you want to this is so important see what I'm doing there do not stretch that frontal back you want to stretch it down to the sides and if it's hanging over the dome cap that is fine just make sure you stretch it down and not back and pin it because if you stretch it back it's not gonna make the your your frontal is not gonna lay right so you're gonna pin it down pull it down as tight as you can and then and you see the tabs hanging there that is totally okay and you're just gonna repeat it on the, the other side and just pull it down do not pull it back and just pin 
And now what we're going to do is that those, the space between the pin at the top of the head and by the ear, we're going to pull that back as tight as we can and just pin it in the middle. And we're going to do that on both sides. Just pull back and pin. So now that we have the frontal secure, this is how it should look. And you see that looseness in the front? That is okay because that is the part that's hanging over your dome cap. We just want to secure everything that is attached to the dome cap. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start sewing down the frontal. So I'm going to start from the top, go down one side, and then go back and do the other side. And you just want to make sure your stitches are neat and closely together when it comes to the frontal. That The frontal is the most important part. Also, skip over that line. You see that line there? Do not sew on that because that line has elastic in it and that's what causes your dome cap to stretch. And we definitely want a stretch in our dome cap. So do not sew onto that line. Just sew, sew over it. And when you get to the pins, just go ahead and pull the pins out as you sew. And you also just want to clip your hair out of the way so that you are not sewing down your hair. And while I'm finishing up sewing down this frontal, if you are interested on how I achieved this color, I do have a tutorial on how I did that. So I'm going to pin it up at the top here, or you can just go back and watch my last video, and that will be the coloring process. And I did use the water method. Alrighty, so we are getting close to the elastic band and it is very important that you do not sew onto that thick part. Now there is an outer layer of mesh on the band. You can sew onto that. So you're going to just lift that mesh up and sew onto the mesh. Do not, I repeat, do not sew into the thick part of it. Just the top layer of mesh. Because again, if you do that, you will not be able to stretch your wig.
and this is how it should look when it's all completed. I was using the thread that came with the canvas head and it was horrible, you guys. So I end up switching out the thread. That's why you kind of see me just pull it there because I didn't need to cut it. It was tearing that easily. So I end up uh, using the thread that I already had. So I definitely wouldn't recommend using the thread that came with that canvas head. But I mean, if it works for you, fine. But for me, it was a no-go. So now we're just moving over to the other side and we're just gonna go ahead and repeat the same process and just go ahead and sew that frontal down, making sure to skip over the thick line no 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 <laughs> and go right over it and just allow that line to stretch Alrighty, and now that we got that frontal secured, this is how it should look once you have both sides sewn down. And another thing I saw Slade by Jordan do is he go ahead, he goes ahead and parts the frontal down the middle and puts two French braids. And as he French braids, he pulls down on the frontal to see if it's bunching up at all. And if it doesn't bunch up, that's a good sign that your frontal is gonna lay correctly. If you have a bunch of, if it bunches up a lot, then you probably need to take the frontal off and try to do it again try placing it down again until you get it correct because if your frontal is not right your whole wig is going to be off so it looked good to me so i continued on okay and now we're going to go ahead and start sewing on our bundles and you see me pulling up the mesh part again we do not want to sew onto the thickness so i just pulled out the mesh layer so you could see what that looks like and we're just going to start sewing onto that mesh layer skipping over the two lines again and just sewing on now a lot of people do not sew onto the back of the front of the a mesh dome they kind of leave that part 
open and just go ahead and sew onto the open mesh portion because they never put their hair up or pull back or don't care about that being out like that. But if you want it to be sewn all the way basically to the back of that dome, just do this and you'll be fine. Just make sure you don't grab any of that elastic band and just sew through the mesh. And I did start with my longer bundle in the back, which is the 24. Fold it over. We are not cutting the wefts here. We are not going to cut them. We just fold it over and continue to sew. I've always been taught since the time I started doing weaves and wigs to if you can afford not to cut, the weft, do not because when you cut the weft, it can cause more shedding. So we just fold it over and continue to sew. And because I am only working with three bundles, I am kind of making the space in between it pretty wide because I want to make sure I have enough hair when dealing with um, curly hair you can do it even more with straight hair is a little difficult so you want to make it wide but not too wide where you have gaps if you have gaps in um, in between and you can see through it you'll want to go back and add a track or two between those gaps if you have hair left over and I also use a T-pin to hold the track in place because it's just easier for me to hold the track in place. And then as I am sewing, I just take the T-pin out. But I definitely do that. It just makes the process easier for me. And basically, we're just going to do this all the way till we get to the top. So I'm going to hush my mouth and uh, kind of let you watch. And if I need to jump in when something is important, I'll definitely do that. But go ahead and watch me work. Kreative.
die Kreative. Alrighty, so I want to jump in because I've gotten closer closer to uh, one of the uh, or to the frontal with one of the tracks, and I wanted to show you what I do here. We definitely, when we get to that edge where part of the elastic band is, we definitely want to just do the method of just sewing on top of the mesh. But most importantly, we do not want to show our sew our track onto our frontal because we do not want to restrict our frontal. So you get it as close as possible, and then you just fold the track over. But do not, I repeat, do not sew onto your frontal. You see where they meet? Do not sew onto them. So I'm going to put one more stitch in and then from that point on I'm going to go ahead and just flip the track over and start my next row. Kreative.
Alrighty, so now we're at the top of our wig. I was contemplating doing one more fold over, but I think this is where I'm gonna start to cut the wefts of uh, the bundles because I want it to be flat. I don't want it to be bulky at the top of my wig. So I go ahead and cut the bundles. I hate doing it, but up here, if I want my wig to look less wiggy and more natural, you have to start cutting the wefts. So I went ahead and started to cut the wefts off and I started to just place the wefts onto the mesh dome and start to sew until I get to the tippy 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 top. Kreative. And I wanted to jump in right here because I want to show you how I decided to take this track here and kind kind of sew it over those tracks that were on the side there because I did not want them to show. So I'm just taking this one track and sewing it over. Not sewing it on the closure, but sewing it over the tracks that were showing right there. Because I wanted my closure to lay flat. I didn't want to see any black string. I didn't want to see any of that white <laughs> whiteness of the uh, wefts. So I went ahead and just sewed over that. Tied it off and cut it. And then we're just finishing up. The, this is our last and final track. As you can see, I am still not sewing onto the frontal. I am just getting really, really close and making them meet. And this is our last track. All right, y'all, this is it. We are coming up on our final stitch. We're just gonna tie that bad boy off and cut off the extra thread and the extra piece of the bundle and uh, or the track and we'll be good to go. And we'll be all done with our wig. Well, as far as done with the construction part of it, we are still gonna need to pluck and style and install the wig but this is how it should look once you have everything sewn on now I'm going to take those two braids out and also I forgot to record this but you just want to cut off all that extra dome cap that covers the lace and just make sure you do not cut the lace and you are good to go now this is uh, looking <laughs> a very interview with the vampire ready uh, because we are not plucked but we are gonna go in and pluck the heck out of this and I did not get any of that on film because I am going to admit I am still working on my plucking skills so I did not want to show you something that I am not good at because I don't want you to mess up so there are a bunch of other uh, beauties out here who have great plucking videos that you can check out um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just straighten it and pluck it off camera so that you can see the final product and if you're interested on how I 
colored this hair make sure you check out my last video but this is it all straightened and my version of plucky but i hope you enjoyed this i hope this was helpful to someone but until next time make sure you like subscribe turn on post notifications and i love you guys peace out